you've decided to actually get a mobile radio, not a handheld and stick it in the car, and you've also decided that you want one of the nice ones with the touch screens and all the bells and whistles. We're going to look at uh, the ICOM ID5100 and the Yaesu FTM400 uh, this time on K6UDA Radio. So this question basically came to me in the form of an email from a, from a viewer asking why I decided to go with the FTM 400 over the ID 5100 in the Jeep. So let's dive into this question. And if this is your first time here on the channel, please right now hit the subscribe, hit that bell notification so you know when I put out new videos. And let's get to it. The biggest and first obvious thing with both of these radios, uh, as far as the head unit, is the size of the head unit. The uh, ID5100 measures in at three inches, three and one eighth inches high by seven inches long. Well, this one, the FTM 400, is two and three quarter inches high by five and a half inches long. Huge, huge difference when you're uh, going from the cockpit of my uh, Dodge pickup truck to a Jeep Wrangler, and the Jeep Wrangler uh, just doesn't have a lot of room there on the dash, so it really needed to have something that was uh, that was smaller, a smaller footprint to keep the thing manageable. Uh, what do they look like in the uh, in the wild here? This one in my pickup truck, this one in my Jeep. Let's go take a look. Okay, I'm out at the Jeep. Let's go take a look at what this thing looks like in here. Very, very limited cockpit space in the Jeep. I, uh, I did have it mounted up here, but you know what? A lot of people told me, you know, you're uh, giving it a lot of excessive heat up there. So I decided to move it down here. So I made a ram mounting system and now it's uh, it's down here. So to turn this one on, turn power on here and up there to the CB radio. And the radio comes on. I've got it mounted sideways, kind of gives me just a little bit or gives my passenger a little bit more space. Very, very visible, uh, very easy to see this. I have no issues with this at all. No fading, no nothing. Much different story out here. Now granted, it is cold right now. So, but I have a lot more room here on the dash and uh, everywhere else. So, take a look. Right now, the screen looks fantastic. Uh, very, very visible. But man, when it gets hot, this thing absolutely goes away. Now, from my driving position over here, quite a bit more faded, uh, quite a bit less readable from the angle. And you say, oh, why don't you just angle it over? Well, I built this mount underneath and I would have to redesign the whole mount. And I don't really want to do that. So other than the size difference between the two of these things, the, uh, the other thing was this, after several years, had a major fading problem in the summertime. I mean, to the point where I could barely see this screen. This, so far after one year in the Jeep, has not had any fading issues, and uh, I 
Don't even know what to attribute it to. I don't know if it's the difference between a monochrome screen and a color screen, or if it is just something that came out two years ago as opposed to five or six years ago. The other big thing is the ability of this one, the Yesu unit, to do actual APRS. This does a version of APRS called DPRS, which is a beacon out only. This will, uh, this will go ahead and tell you where I'm at, but I can't see where anybody else is at. With this one, if I'm traveling with other people that are APRS enabled, uh, I could see them as well as they could see me. We could send messages back and forth. I could send emails. I could do all kinds of things with APRS. And you get all kinds of cool messages like this. So anyway, guys, that's why I am doing both the uh, ID5100 and the FTM400 now. Two different kinds of radios for two different uh, applications and I would say the biggest one is uh, you know my everyday driving uh, where I don't really need it so much or I just want to talk on uh, D-Star and I would say more of my adventure rig where I've got a full APRS suite here and, uh, and it enables me to kind of take this thing on the road and do what I want to do with it. I'm going to tell you, whichever one of these radios you decide to pick, uh, you're not going to go wrong. These both, both these radios are rock solid. I love them. Uh, different reasons, different things, but uh, both good, good radios. I would, uh, I would caution you though, if you live in a nice warm climate, that uh, ID5100, you might have a fading problem. I don't know if they fixed that in the later models. You know, I actually need to give a just a huge thank you and shout out to my uh, to my patrons and my supporters there on uh, Patreon and PayPal. You guys rock. I'm gonna take this minute and I want to thank you guys personally, the guys that uh, that really make this possible. A lot of preparation goes into this show. A uh, huge amount of resources, cameras, lighting, uh, memory cards, software, uh, time and energy, and my patrons and the guys that support me on PayPal. Thank you so much. John Spady, James E. Brown, Scott Van Walsam, Jim Blakely, Dwayne Vincent, K4BBN, Joe Duncan, Don, who doesn't want your name out there, but hey, you know what? It's out there. Uh, Gary Koch, VK3PGK, Eric Farrow, West Coast, uh, Graham Koch, Shadow Bear, Christopher Parrish, Michael Katorba, Kat and I always misspell that, my friend, uh, and Michael McKay Blair. You guys rock it so hard. I am going to do a special video just for you guys, and uh, stay tuned for that. It's, it's actually going to be a little too spicy for uh, YouTube anyway. So I hope you enjoy it when it comes out. Anyway, guys, uh, that's all I've got this time. If you want to join this list of uh, cool cats and have my uh, forever gratitude, Please check out my PayPal and my Patreon. Uh, that's all I got. I'm Bob, K6UDA, and I'm out of here. 7-3, my friends. Later.